Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Christy. Today's video is going to be easy, low carb, keto, and diabetic friendly desserts and treats. If it's a complicated recipe, I'm less likely to even attempt it. I don't want ingredients that are going to be things I have never heard of. I have to search for or order online. I've said it numerous times. I'm not a baker. I'm not a chef. I like things really quick and easy. Now there is an entire playlist of these types of videos. So if you're looking for two ingredient peanut butter fudge, three ingredient nut clusters, four ingredient cookies, then you need to go check those out, especially if you're like me and you don't like difficult recipes. Before I get started though, let me go ahead and say, if you're not subscribed, I would love to have you as a member of my YouTube family. Hit the notification bell so that when I upload, you'll be alerted. Follow me over on my other social media accounts if you're looking for additional content. I have TikTok, Instagram, and I'm even over on Pinterest now. There is an amazing Facebook group, All Things Keto with Christy. It's not just keto, it's a little bit of everything. So no matter what weight loss journey you're on, you are welcome over there. It's gonna be a safe place with support and motivation. So if you're the keto police, don't come over there. You're not gonna like this group. All of those will be linked in the description box for you so you can click on them, it'll take you on over. Also in that description box, if I do talk about anything specifically today, I'll have it down there for you in case you're looking for more information. And always in my description box, I'm gonna have lots of discount codes for you guys so that you can save money on some of your favorite keto and low carb products. Never pay full price, I got you covered. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with some of these really simple, easy recipes. But before we get started with today's video, I do want you to know that Perfect Keto is launching a new product. It's gonna be their mac and cheese. It's available for pre-order. They are offering a tiered discount right now, so the more you buy, the more you save. The sale is gonna be site-wide, so you can mix and match products. If you buy four or more, you're gonna be able to save 30% off of your order. This deal is gonna run until April 29th. If you're watching this video after that, don't worry, I've got you covered there's always a perfect keto discount code in my description box okay let's go ahead and get started three ingredient peanut butter cookies in the air fryer and the best part they're soft batch I thought I already shared this recipe over here I know I did put it in a shorts video but for some reason I could not find it in a YouTube video granted right now my blood sugar is 58 and that's the reason why I'm making these cookies because I want to bring my blood sugar up so maybe I just couldn't find it if I've already showed this in a video I apologize you're gonna need a natural peanut butter that doesn't have any sugar or added ingredients that way we can keep the carb count as low as possible. I like to use a confectioner or powdered sweetener that is a one-to-one -one ratio for sugar. I like the finer consistency and then that way you don't have this granular or gritty taste to your cookies. You're also gonna need an egg. I'm gonna combine everything into one bowl. One cup of the natural peanut butter. You can use the creamy or the crunchy. Two thirds cup of the sweetener and one egg. Mix all that up until it is completely combined. You want to get rid of all of those confectioner or powdered sugar clumps. Look how it turns into a cookie dough with just those three simple ingredients. Now we're going to roll these into balls, press them into a cookie form. Using a fork, make that peanut butter crisscross design and then place in your air fryer, preferably on one of your liners so you don't make a mess. Now these are gonna go into the air fryer. Don't worry, there's more. 350 degrees for four to six minutes. I like to check them at the four minute mark because you don't want them to overcook. This batch was in there only four minutes and I know you're like, Christy, that was not long enough, they are not done. But everybody's air fryer is gonna be different plus I don't know what it is about peanut butter. When you pull it out of the oven and as it cools, I swear it continues to cook while it's still warm. Do not try to move these while they're hot or pick them up because here's what's gonna happen. Don't worry about this cookie. I'm gonna eat it. No cookie will go to waste here. But I wanna show you, while they're still hot, they're gonna be crumbly. 
but as they cool, that's when the magic happens. You're gonna be able to pick them up, no problem. Just have some restraint. Let these sit on a wire rack until they cool completely. Now, while these are sitting here cooling, I do want to say a few things. Didn't figure out macros because everybody's going to use different peanut butter, different sweeteners. Everyone's going to come out with a different number of cookies. If you are concerned about macros, you definitely need to figure that out for yourself. Also, I don't make these super sweet because I like to taste my peanut butter. If you want to add more sugar, go for it. If you like a sweeter cookie. Once the cookies have completely cooled, I put them in a glass container with a lid. That's going to make it airtight. I store these out on the countertop. I don't put them in the fridge or the freezer. Being 100% honest though, they go fast, especially when Chris is home and Kerrigan. We all love these. Normally when I make a batch, they're gone within 24 hours. Since it's just me here in Briley right now, these may last a couple of days, but I'm gonna be using them hopefully to bring my blood sugar up because peanuts and peanut butter seem to do that. And I'm still struggling to get my sugar up. Two ingredient white chocolate pecan clusters. You're gonna need white chocolate chips. You can use Lily's or Chalk Zero. I always have the Chalk Zero discount code listed in the description box. You're gonna need pecans. Now you can use toasted, roasted, raw, whichever you like best. These are just the Great Value brand. I picked them up at Walmart in the baking section because nothing is added to these but pecans. I like to be able to have the choice if I want them raw or if I want to roast them or toast them in the oven. I did just go ahead and toast these because I do like the combo of sweet from the baking chips and salty from the toasted pecans. So I just take my pecans, I toss them in a tablespoon of melted butter, lay them out on a piece of parchment paper, single layer, and I actually sprinkle a little bit of salt on those as well. Then I'll put them in a 350 degree oven for about seven minutes. That's it. So buy yours raw, then you can have the option of either toasting, roasting, or eating them plain. I did go ahead and let these cool before I'm gonna do anything else with them. Into my microwave safe dish, I put one cup of the white chocolate baking chips. I'm gonna melt these in 30 second intervals. I'll take them out, stir them, and then put them back in. It usually takes about 30 seconds the first time and 15 seconds the second time. Continue to stir these after about that 15 seconds. And even though you're gonna still have whole chips in there, as you mix, they are going to go ahead and melt. If you leave these in the microwave too long, they'll scorch. Now to my melted white chocolate, I'm going to add in one and one fourth cups of my pecans. Give that a quick mix until they are completely coated. Once I have it completely mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead and scoop these out onto a cookie sheet with lined parchment paper. That way they won't stick. I do not have the macros and I do not know the serving size. This is something that if you're worried about macros and you wanna count calories, fat, carbs, you need to figure this up for yourself because everybody's serving size is gonna be different. And I'm just gonna use a large spoon to do that. I was able to scoop out 12 clusters. Now, this is a completely optional step. I like to sprinkle with a little bit of chopped up toasted pecans that I had left over. Add to the refrigerator or freezer to chill until they set up. Usually takes about 20 minutes. Once the clusters are set up, I go ahead and remove them from the freezer and I like to store these in an airtight container in the refrigerator. When I'm ready to eat one, I pull these out about five minutes in advance. You can eat them straight out of the fridge if you want. I just like them a little bit softer. Four ingredient keto cookies. These are gonna be extremely versatile. You're gonna be able to customize these however you like. Four tablespoons of unsalted butter. You're gonna need this at room temperature. To the butter, you're gonna add an eight ounce block of softened cream cheese. I like to pick up the Philadelphia brand because it seems to have less carbs than the store brands. One egg, 
Using my hand mixer, I'm gonna go ahead and beat these three ingredients together. If you wanna use a stand mixer, that's fine, but for me, and I'm probably the only one, I find those big stand mixers to just be too big and bulky. I'm old school. Now that I have that completely blended together, no lumps or clumps, and it's actually a little bit fluffier, I'm gonna add in the Duncan Hines yellow cake mix, the keto one that's only four net carbs a serving. This has really decent ingredients. I love this cake mix. I've made so many different recipes with it. They now have a chocolate chip cookie mix and they also have the brownie mix. You can pick these up at my Walmart. They're about $4.98 and sometimes you can even catch them on Amazon. If they're available, I'll link it in the description box for you. Once you have your cookie dough blended together, you can add in anything else that you want. You can make these different every single time or you can just make them like they are. You can add extracts. I'm gonna add just a dash of lemon to this one. Chocolate chips, white chocolate chips, mint chips. Be as creative as you want. Now using my scoop, I'm going to go ahead and put these on a lined cooking sheet. I roll them into balls, flatten them out so they do have that cookie shape into a 350 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. Keep an eye on these, you don't want them to burn. I like to leave the cookies in until they start to get golden brown on the edges. This batch was in exactly 12 minutes. I went ahead and placed them on a wire rack so that they had a chance to cool. You don't wanna eat these while they're warm. This is a cake style cookie, soft batch. So it does have the tendency to fall apart when it's still really hot. Once the cookies are completely cool, I will put them in a glass container that's gonna be airtight and I'll store them out. No need to put them in the fridge. Let me know in the comments below, what would you add to your cookies? Let me know in the comments below if you have a treats recipe that only requires two or three ingredients. I may feature it in the next video. Thanks for watching and I hope everyone has a great week. Bye.